my students. Today we're going to be talking about protein synthesis, the second step called translation. So again, we're going to have our big overview picture. Remember last time we talked about DNA and it being copied through the process of transcription, but it was being copied into DNA's weird single-stranded cousin called mRNA, right? And it had slightly different base pairing rules. Today, we're going to be talking about the other half of this process, really the protein synthesis part, but this whole thing is called protein synthesis. But this purpley structure here must be what? Since protein synthesis is making a protein. It must be a protein. And we call this part translation because so far we've had DNA and RNA. Those are both in the language of nucleic acids. But protein is a totally different macromolecule. So I have to change the language. I am going from nucleic acids to proteins, a different macromolecule entirely, which is why I call this translation. To talk about translation, I have to really understand the genetic code. So just a reminder, the genetic code was really the sequence of bases, those A's, T's, C's, and G's, those nucleotides that correspond oops, to a particular amino acid. So all the A's, T's, and C's, and G's, their order will determine what protein building block amino acid will go where. All right, that's the genetic code. What nucleotides are there and in what order? And they will all code for a particular amino acid. Now, to understand this, we have to learn that actually there's a lot of types of amino acids. In IB Biology in college, if you were majoring in biology, you would learn the details of these 20 different amino acids. But for now, we just need to know there are 20 different kinds. And the different amino acids and their order in a protein molecule, their sequence, that'll determine the structure and function of a protein. So the different amino acids that are present and their order will determine the protein's job. How interesting. So it is really important that as we translate the code of DNA and RNA into proteins or amino acids, that we translate that code very well. And to make the code simpler, we read it through a three-letter sequence. That three-letter sequence is called a codon. A codon is three nucleotide sequence, such as C, I mean GCA, that's an example, in the mRNA. And we're going to translate that three-letter code into a particular amino acid. So every three letters in mRNA is going to make one translated amino acid, going from the language of nucleotides, nucleic acids, to the language of amino acids, protein. Here are the steps of this process, okay? So remember, last time we left with our DNA being copied into a message, an mRNA message, okay, a single section of the DNA. Now, our DNA can't leave the nucleus, but our middleman, the mRNA, can leave the nucleus. And it needs to leave the nucleus into the cytoplasm for our step called translation. So now our middleman, the mRNA, will leave the nucleus for the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, the mRNA will find this big-looking hamburger structure, which is actually this thing. And if we look at this picture, it says it's a ribosome. Ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis. So that makes sense that ribosomes are coming back into what we're talking about here in biology. So the ribosome is actually broken up into two pieces. And the ribosome looks so big here compared to our normal dot-looking ribosomes in our cell pictures because we're that zoomed in. So the ribosome will clamp on to a specific three-letter sequence called the start codon, which is usually the sequence AUG in the mRNA. That's where the ribosome will clamp down because that, that part means start making the translation here. Start here. 
Now, the whole process of translation is going to rely on a new type of RNA. This new type of RNA is called a transfer RNA, tRNA. You might want to draw this example of a tRNA in your notes. A tRNA kind of looks like the shape of the letter T. How useful is that? And at the top of our letter T, there's a circle. And here it says there's an amino acid. And this here is an example of one of the 20 amino acids. At the bottom of our letter T, we have three different nucleotide-looking letters. Okay, these three letters are really important. The tRNA will bind to specific amino acids at the top, just like we described here, okay? But we call the tRNA T for its shape, but also because it's going to transfer or truck in amino acids to the correct part of the mRNA. So remember, the mRNA is stuck here at the ribosome. It's kind of like its docking station. Okay, so the mRNA is this flat red thing, and this is like a garage, a docking station, and here we have the T-shaped letters in light blue, and at the top of them are these circles that are the amino acids. Okay, so we have the first one, the start codon, and now a second one. A truck or a tRNA will come in and it'll dock at that new codon, and it'll dock at the right codon because the tRNA, remember, has that three-letter sequence at the bottom of it. We call that three-letter sequence at the bottom of the tRNA the anticodon. I remember the anticodon is on the tRNA because anti is on, sounds like tRNA. So notice that this CAG matches the mRNA GUA. C. They are complementary base pairing matches, so they almost attract one another like magnets, okay? And that is what allows the correct amino acid match for this codon to be brought to the correct spot. Pretty amazing. So to summarize, a tRNA trucks in an amino acid and it uses its special complementary anticodon to match with a codon here on the mRNA. These match like puzzle pieces to bring in the correct amino acid. Thank goodness for those tRNA trucks. Eventually the ribosome will continue to move along the message or the messenger RNA, this flat piece, it'll read it. Ribosomes are the readers and as they move, a new codon will open up and a new tRNA will be able to truck in and bring the correct amino acid to the correct codon. These amino acids will bond together through peptide bonds to make a growing protein. As the protein begins to grow, eventually a codon will show up that is called the stop or release codon. This will force the tRNA to eject and the protein to be released and stopped. And the reader or ribosome will disassemble. So until we reach a stop codon, amino acids will be continued to be trucked in by tRNA. To summarize, we've now talked about two different types of RNA. The first was in the nucleus and also in the cytoplasm, slightly called cytosol. That was our mRNA, the message. It is usually drawn flat or like that single strand. We think of it as a recipe card, one copy of the DNA. We've now also learned about tRNA, which we call the truck. It is only found in the cytoplasm or the cytosol. We did not talk about it in the nucleus. Remember, it trucks in amino acids and they dock at the mRNA, which is at the ribosome, matching its anticodon with the correct codon, bringing that correct amino acid in. Lastly, 
we've talked about the fact that we are really in protein synthesis building a protein molecule. Don't forget that the bonds between amino acids that make up a protein, those were called peptide bonds. So it is very likely that you will hear the synonym for a protein polymer as a polypeptide, meaning it has lots of peptide bonds. This is a synonym for protein. Okay, so this long chain can be called a polypeptide. So let's summarize the whole thing. Last slide, you made it. So in our translation step, we're taking the language of nucleic acids that we have in our messenger RNA, and we're translating it to the language of proteins, amino acid. This happens at the reading station, the ribosome. Ribosome is the site of protein synthesis. We're going to do this because mRNA has a code, three letters, codons, and that is the language to bring the correct amino acid trucked in by a tRNA. Awesome job. It's quite complicated, and we're going to practice in class.